Hilal Elver is joining us here in the studio. And Hilal is the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to food. And Zimbabwe is relevant because you just spent 11 days in the southern African country. Um, apart from your professional assessment, how difficult is it? Because uh, from what I read of your report, you were literally meeting people who were starving. Yes, actually it was a very, very serious situation. Even we know before we, uh, we arrived to Zimbabwe, the situation was very bad because we have, uh, the country was dealing with 500% inflation, there's no money, there's no elect electricity, only four hours in the entire country, not only rural areas, even the Harare. And the, the drinking water has a very little chlorine to clean up. That's a very serious issue because uh, government is su uh, suffering from the cash that to get this. And the most importantly in relation to food insecurity, Zimbabweans have a, a staple food uh, corn and that they have to import corn. And there was no money to import enough corn and they had only one month kind of available to uh, bring the really most insecure uh, population which is in the rural areas and the, around the Harare in the suburban. So it, it is a very serious uh, situation. You see the people, they are waiting for in front of the banks hours and days to cash very little money that they get. And you look at the gas stations, day after day they are waiting for to get the gas. Uh, everything is extremely expensive and people spend a lot of time to get this major uh, public services that they can really work. Work situation is very bad. Uh, hospi hospitals, the doctors are uh, striking and then the government fired them. Mm. So 90% of the hospitals are empty right now. I went to a hospital, I saw the children are uh, very young, only the emergency situation that there and they were about to die from the malnutrition. It's a situation is serious. And I'm talking about the 60% of the population. I'm not talking about the entire, of course. And the levels of the hunger is very different uh, depending on which area, uh, level third and level four. And level five is starvation. So I try to make clear that it's about to go to starvation, mm. which is people are starting to die from hunger. Hilal, the Food and Agricultural mm. Organization, the specialized mm. organization of the United Nations based in Rome, in April, it published a report uh, which shows the top 10 ranked countries in the world for food insecurity. I mean, there's a difference between yeah. food insecurity and access to food and people yeah. who require food aid, but they're in the same theme. So let's just have a look at that graphic and tell me how much Zimbabwe is an example of these other countries where man has made this disaster. Because, you know, we talked about possible corruption in North yeah. Korea. It's a good example where yeah. the elite buy and sell land so agriculture can potentially mm -hmm. suffer uh, mismanagement, which Zimbabwe is undoubtedly a yes. case. You actually called for the lifting of all economic sanctions on Zimbabwe because you deem what's happening there to be a man-made crisis. It's not about natural disasters. It's been created by human beings. Well, of course, uh, there are a, a variety of uh, issues that came together like a perfect storm. If you look at, the, for instance, you mentioned about the North Korea, you mentioned about the Venezuela, and we are mentioning right now Zimbabwe, they all are also suffering from economic sanctions. Yeah. Sanction is a very serious issue. Uh, basically, sanction affects only bottom of the bottom uh, society rather than targeted. These sanctions are basically targeted. I talk to international community and diplomats from the variety of countries. U United States and EU is, um, is uh, sanctioning the Zimbabwe and they are telling that this is only targeted people, 141 people, they cannot travel, they cannot use bank, but it is not true because Zimbabwean cannot get the international help easily. The international uh, food aid goes around the uh, uh, NGOs and other international UN organizations in order to come back to ordinary people, really they lost at least half, uh, half of the, what, what they can get. So 
Uh, among all these things, also there was a, a series of drought uh, come from the El Nino. As you know, because of the climate change, this drought uh, comes very often and stays longer and deeper. So uh, this functionality of the economic uh, situation and uh, also government and opposition party are really fighting with each other that there is an uh, important polarization mm. in, in the society so they can't come together. Uh, the uh, World Food Program is helping but cannot handle all. So it is a very serious issue. I think everyone should uh, stay together. I think I saw uh, today in the news that World Food Program uh, decided to give more uh, kind of uh, food aid and assistance, but also food aid and assistance is not solving the problem, just the bandage, what is happening in the long term. Absolutely. Yeah. Prevention is the key to yeah. all the exactly. problems that we yeah. always discuss on programs yeah. like this. And then there's the other issue. Uh, recently, the United Nations accused Houthi rebels in Yemen of appropriating food that was supposed to go to people who needed it more. The Houthis denied that. The UN said, no, it's definitely happening. In Syria, a few years ago, when uh, the regime of Bashar al-Assad was attacking Aleppo to try to retake it, things got so difficult in terms of food, locals were asking their imam for permission to eat cats. Okay, we know food is used as a weapon of war. Wow. Is that an international crime? And can the UN do anything about that? Because it's such a specific instance of how food is being used or denied to people in a situation of conflict, which is clearly dangerous for the UN yeah. to go into. It's a, it's a very important issue that you mentioned. I keep working on that issue because one of the important problems of the food insecurity, why we can't handle it, because of the uh, situation, conflict situation. Yes. In the conflict situation, using... Uh, food and water as a weapon of war is a very uh, old uh, tactic, yes. you know, middle age, even they, they have been doing. And they have been doing again right now, and the two parties, not only one party, not only on uh, uh, is in Yemen, but also government. And the same thing, South Sudan and the other places in Syria too. Whoever is in the uh, part of the conflict, they unfortunately use ordinary citizens uh, uh, to uh, to get the kind of political uh, 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 kind of victory. So, is it an international? According to international, is it a crime? If you look at the uh, the Rome Statute, international uh, yeah. criminal uh, uh, court statute, uh, there is a kind of it should be part of the crimes against humanity because crimes against humanity makes. Uh, several of important war crimes and there is also one more uh, open to interpretation ways uh, any uh, any uh, severe human rights violations should be uh, 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 crimes against humanity but despite all these things so far there is a significant impunity is going on no country or no rebellious uh, be become responsible what they did uh, uh, and they have been doing. There are several reasons. The most important reason, of course, there is a more severe crime is happening, either genocide or killing. No, 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 yes. or, so they don't even look at uh, what is happening in terms of food insecurity, but it's extremely serious. I'm working on that. Uh, there is a UN uh, Security Council decision uh, six months ago, and they, they have been thinking about it has to be war crime during yeah. the war situation. But uh, still, there's an ambiguity. Hilal, we're out of time. Thank you so much indeed for coming in and telling Thank us you about for... your experiences working for the United Nations, trying to get people access to food. Really appreciate it. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you for inviting me. It's Thank a you. pleasure. Uh,